Yeah, that's how it's always been for me too. I've always I've always noticed too, uh, students like to look at more contemporary art, and I think we have to have that fine balance. I think we need to have that fine balance between what's happened in the past, but also what's happened in the future. And I always suggest to my students that they should research artists because I really want them to find art songs by themselves. I actually have them do a research project. It's um, I call it a visual research project. Basically, they, they look up information on their own. I give them the name of an artist, and they can only search through Google Images. Uh, they can only do their research through Google Images, and they have to print off, I think, uh, print off, it depends on the year, uh, usually about two pages worth of pictures. Uh, and then they basically do a report based off of the pictures that they printed off, and why they chose the artist, what their style, probably what uh, what year they came out of, what genre of art they have, materials, everything like that. They basically just analyze an artist by the material. And so it's really useful and really it's really useful, and the students really get into it because they get to own Google Images at school, and they think that's such a big deal. And so it's really cool. Um, what about um, Miss, Mr. Andrew? Did you have any? I know you were saying you were having problems with post assessment. Uh, were you? How's that coming along this month? Are you doing any better? Uh, yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing a little bit better with it. I'm. I'm really just trying. I'm, I'm still tweaking my rubric a little bit, but I think it's going over pretty well. I'm looking up some stuff online. I'm trying to find some rubrics online, and I think that's really what's doing the best. So. Okay. Uh, what about? It says right here we have our uh, student performance needs. Um, what? How are? How are our perform students performing? Are they? Are we doing a good job? I mean, are we still? I know we talked about yesterday, like the slob sloppy work syndrome. I was wondering if there was any research on that. If we found anything else about that. Yeah, yeah. I found something that was really uh, interesting. It's basically just uh, you. Everybody has to go through that scribbling page as an infant. And if you don't get that, then you're still, you're kind of stuck, frozen in that phase. And so, um, I always tell my students that they, that I demand perfection artwork, but I do have a couple students that really, they just didn't get that much experience in art as a kid, and as, a, as a child. And so, there, there's just a couple students that just didn't get that much experience as a child. And so, I think that it would be, and so I let them get have an exp uh, had a moment where they can express themselves, but I also always bring them back to the uh, professional artwork. So I do adapt and I change my curriculum a little bit for my few students, but for the majority of students, I just, I demand that it's a professional artwork. I demand that it comes out that I tell them that they're little artists and so they should create art that's actually useful. That is actually professional professional and that they will be proud. Okay, sounds really good, thank you. Um, actually sticking actually uh, sticking with me actually no actually I was doing this move. I'm, I'm getting myself mixed up. Um, guest speakers. Have we um, I found some guest speakers that are I found some guest speakers that would be really really good to come in. I found some uh, college students that are part of an art week. Uh, and they can talk to our students kind of about studio and kind of real life, uh, real life application, and kind of the college side, like art schools and stuff like that. I think that'd be really interesting. To go and do that. Are you guys open in your curriculum a little bit for uh, guest speakers? How are we doing on that? No, yeah, I um, I actually do not have any room. I actually just scheduled in a um, tattoo artist. Let me know. I have a friend who does tattoos and. He has, he has like the two tags of sleeves, and he's, he's really cool, he's really fun, and he's going to talk to my students about just, you know, what it, what it is to be a tattoo artist, kind of how he got interested in that, and that he actually did go to college for graphic design, and that's how he cleaned up his style a lot more, um, but no, he's, he's going to talk to my students about that, what about um, you, Mr. Dickman, do you think you got some, I think you got some room. Yeah, I got a little bit, I got, I, I think I can squeeze in maybe a student, can you uh, email me the... Can you email me their addresses and phone numbers, and I'll get in contact with them through Facebook or through my blog or anything like that? Can you do that for me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can definitely do that for you. I can definitely uh, get that re get that arranged for you, and we can uh, get that done. And hopefully, we'll be able to fit somebody.
for you, Mr. Andrew, hope you look at somebody. Um, uh, and I also was talking, I have a couple friends, I was able to get in contact with the uh, Cher Cherokee Indian Association, and I'm able to get some Cherokee Indians to come in and speak to uh, some of our students. I'm also talking with our principal. I'm also speaking to our principal and uh, see if he can allow us to have the entire school come in for a day, uh, our entire school maybe schedule a day. And so we're working on that detail. We're working on that detail right there. Um, moving on, we're gonna try to get through this quickly. Um, our cross connections, how are we doing with um, I know this was a big time, a big one last month. We were having some difficulties with, um, we were having some challenges with integrating a lot of things. I know we said history was probably the easiest, but uh, history was probably the easiest, but like music and PE, I think we said were like the two hardest ones. We were able to integrate English and everything like that, but have you guys figured stuff out? Have you guys figured what you could be doing? Yeah, I actually figured out kind of stuff. I, I figured out some kind of study stuff to do. I found out that uh, a lot of my, like if I have my students uh, stand up and show me how to do a line, I know it seems extremely elementary, but I have them. This is a vertical line. They lay down on the floor. That is a horizontal line. I have them standing at an angle, and this is oblique. Or well, this is an oblique. They have to like stand like that, and that's oblique. Um, and it helps them feel how a line should happen too. And that's really important too. You know, a vertical is straight and sturdy. A horizontal is kind of lazy and calm. A dive, uh, oblique line shows di dynamic, of course, you guys, but... So I, I just, I think that's really important. And so, and so I, I found that, I found it really successful in my students. I did that at the beginning of the semester and they still know, they still know the actions of uh, the three basic lines. Honestly, all I do is I just, uh, for music, I just put on Pandora.com and I just, uh, I listen to Roman classic era and I just have my students listen to that through the entire time. On Fridays though, I, we do listen to the 80s. We do listen to 80s on Fridays, which is pretty cool. Um, so, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I was actually able to, um, this last week, the project we just got done with in my class, we just integrated, uh, ge uh, geography. I had them actually with, uh, Styrofoam, they had to build, uh, mountains out of Styrofoam, and we, so we did it in layers, and I had them look at maps, and they had to replicate, they had to replicate a couple of them, and they had to make up their own. And then we actually turned it into a game on the last day, I made them a deal, whoever got them done got to be a part of a game. And so we tried to see which one wasn't made up that one. It was pretty cool. Uh, and so it was really fun. Uh, okay, moving on. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dickman, okay. How's um, the curriculum for African Boogie going along? Are we... Uh, remember that's... Uh, remember that's our... Uh, during um, the last period of the day, some of our students can come over to African Boogie. Uh, our art stu our Excel art students, they can come in and come to African Boogie and it's kinda like an extra half an hour to do some right, to do some art and we're actually trying to build a curriculum now based off of it. And so what have you been doing with our uh, African Boogie series? Um so what I've been what I've been doing